Hello and welcome to episode number 47 of the Havy Digital Podcast, a show for creators, makers, and doers. My goal is to help you make to the max. My name is Ryan Havy, and in this episode, I'm going to tell you why I am now officially hooked on FPV. Let's talk about it. Hello and welcome to the show, 47 episodes in, getting close on a year straight, pretty proud of that. Wherever you happen to be watching or listening, be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to follow me also on social media at Ryan Hiffey on Instagram and Twitter, um, where I spend some additional time answering questions from people like you. And by the way, if you're new to the podcast here, if you're wondering what this is all about, really this is, this is where I document for the most part, this is where I document my progress through things related to whether it's photography, um, video, editing, uh, now FPV, podcasting, live streaming, all these different things that I'm kind of interested in. Um, I take this time to kind of spill the beans. What what knowledge do I have in these areas? I try to share that with all of you and share my progress within those areas with all of you. Um, so that's what we do here. So today, uh, we're talking about FPV. There's no updates. My only updates for this week have been FPV related because I have been flying this thing. If you watched last week's episode, you'll know that uh, it was basically dedicated to this little guy. And this thing is a, just as a quick recap, it's a, uh, just a little mini FPV cine whoop or whoop style drone. Uh, I can fly it indoors, got these cool little bumpers, comes with, at least the starter kit comes with these goggles, where you can see what you're, or where you're flying, this remote control, a couple batteries, a little charger, cool little system, it's 129 bucks, um, and I've been flying it practically nonstop for, today would be day 11, I guess, and, um, you know, <laughs> it's been an interesting 11 days because, um, I, I don't know. I haven't really latched on to anything. Like I've kind of latched on to this, uh, right now it's really just a lot of fun. I've just been flying this around the house and bothering, whoops, bothering all my animals and family members because, uh, you know, I'll just fly by and buzz their heads and give them little haircuts and things like that. Not true, but close enough. And, uh, crash this thing. You can here. We'll even look, look at this. You zoom in real close, you can kind of see where, you know, there's some damage to some of these bumpers, but just tell you how well they work. I had a little, uh, where is it? There's one little support thing, I think right there that broke. I had a propeller that broke that I had to replace. Luckily it came with an extra set of propellers. But the cool thing is that if I wanted to replace just the drone, this is like 45 bucks or something, if I wanted to just get a new one that I could fly inside. So it's not like it's a huge loss if this thing breaks down completely. Uh, since last week, I did buy some more batteries and a different battery charger. I bought like an eight-pack of batteries because really, in my experience, like the, the batteries that come with it, which are these here, um, they say they can last like five minutes, but in my experience, you'll get about three minutes of meaningful flight time on them but here's the thing so um yeah i've just been really really interested in this world now and i was interested pr prior to this as i kind of touched on in the last episode uh, i wanted to start getting into fpv and learning how to fly those types of drones because i have a mavic pro 2 pro but it's got all these different presets and safety um safety whatever you would call them features and things like that um, but you can't with a with a mavic you can't really get that sort of fpv smooth type of flight like that you can kind of get straight shots you can get rotating shots and you can get some cool stuff but you can't get fpv style footage with a mavic 2 pro in most cases so but i was also interested just in guys like mr steel and johnny fpv who can do these incredible things with these drones that can fly over 80 miles per hour I don't, at least at this time, I, I'm not interested in that freestyle type of uh, drone. I'm more interested in the CineWoop style FPV drone, which we will talk about more in a little bit. Um, but that's why I got this one, because 
this is kind of this kind of mimics that Sydney Whoop style. It's not that fast. Um, you know, it's not that crazy for someone like me who, you know, I never grew up playing video games. I played a little bit, but I wasn't I was never good. I never really stuck with it all that much. So I don't feel like I have that dexterity and that coordination with my hands. Um, that said, you know, having been flying this for 11 days now, uh, I'm, I'm pretty proud of the progress that I've made so far on this. And uh, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. And then we're also going to talk about uh, a little purchase that I made related to this stuff in a little bit. So let's talk about what I've learned so far. So, so far, and by the way, um, this, I don't, I'm not sure how, how I want to put this. Like, I, I know the FPV community from what I've seen is very sort of, you know, they're, they're very strict on things. Um, I don't know if strict is the word, but they, you know, they're, they're very opinionated again, from what I've seen. Although I've also seen a lot who are super helpful uh, and kind of supportive and good at answering questions. So this is coming from all of this information is coming from someone who is a complete novice who really knows very, very little in comparison to some people who have been doing it for a while. So if anything, I'm just going to be saying what I know, documenting this process here. And then if anyone who is interested in FPV or has some experience in FPV is watching this and has anything that you want to say, do anything that I'm doing or to offer any tips or feedback, by all means, send me a comment, send me a message. Let's talk about it because I want to keep learning more and more about this. But let's fart. Let's start fart. <laughs> that was a little Freudian slip. Let's start with just as far as like flying this thing. Um, what have I learned there? So as I mentioned previously, there are different flight modes. You have level mode. You have... Uh, horizon mode, you have race mode, and you have acro mode. At least that's what's available on this. I don't know if that's something that's available on all drones that you can, all FPV drones that you can get, but that's what uh, I use with this. I've been, I, I started flying in level mode because level mode will kind of even things out. So if you were to take the joystick, let's say if you, I'll zoom this back out a little bit. If you were to take the, the, or the radio here and let's say hit this, which is your roll. If you tap on that, your drone in level mode would kind of go, roop, roop. it would sort of level itself out. But if you did that here with, or in acro mode, which is kind of like the full manual mode, I guess, if you just give it a little tap, it's going to, roop, it's going to keep going in that direction until you kind of compensate. So you're constantly having to compensate for your movements in acro mode. And I was flying in level mode for a while, getting the feel of that. And I tried to go to acro mode. And I just, I struggled for probably a good two, three days. But I know if I stuck with it, that I would make a little bit of progress. And luckily, that was the case. I was able to kind of uh, get the hang of acro mode. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at now. I've still got a lot of work to do. Um, but so far, uh, I'm, I'm happy with, with, what I'm, with what I'm seeing, with where I'm getting, with being able to fly just around this thing in acro mode. Um, so, yeah, so acro mode, it just takes, just takes a little bit of extra, um, kind of finesse. Um, but, uh, yeah, what else have I learned? Well, here, instead of talking about what I learned, let's go in, I'll show you some of the, uh, drone footage that I've got, the latest footage that I've got. And by the way, one of the things I figured out yesterday uh, we went to kind of like a family little birthday dinner, birthday lunch thing. And uh, I brought the drone along with me and uh, was flying into the backyard. There was no wind or anything, so it was actually a perfect opportunity to kind of fly it outdoors a little bit. And I learned that playing tag with something like this is a great way to practice, um, just, just practice flying and kind of flying in a direction you want to go, those types of things. So my son came outside, and we... Uh, you know what? Anybody else having issues with VLC player lately? I don't know. It keeps crashing on me. But uh, here. Yeah, we'll go. Let me start this over. So this was, we were just playing a little tag. Told him to run around, and I would try to catch him. And uh, so, as you can see, it's a little choppy, but, you know, and he would fly by, and I would try to do a dive, and then I would screw up a little bit and overcompensate, and, and I would have to land, pause, take a breath, take off again 
and then yeah just get back at it and fly fly around eventually i got them but it took a while but uh that's the kind of practice that i'm doing and then today i did another little flight here i don't remember which one yeah so so it's not perfect obviously still got some work to do what happens is what i've noticed is that you know i'll get into a groove and i'll be able to fly around seamlessly have no issues um, and then sometimes I'll get a little ahead of, my, ahead of myself and have to overcompensate a lot of times. And that's, that's something that I need to dial in. I need to make sure that I can fly to where every time that I fly the drone, I'm, I'm going to be in control because sometimes it's very easy to get out of control. So, but yeah, that's a little bit of a progress update. What am I doing? There we go. A little bit of a progress update. And I, and I realized too why I like FPV so much. So, by the way, drinking, uh, drinking a little Coke Zero again today. Felt like a Coke Zero kind of day. I was, I've been thinking about why, why I've enjoyed this so much, and I think there's two reasons to it. One of them, which I've touched on before, is that it's just the focus. Um, there's not a, a lot that I do these days that where I can instantly kind of get into like a flow and a focus. And when you're flying FPV, when you're flying something around that you, you know, granted I've crashed it a ton of, a ton of times, but I don't want to break it and flying it into a wall too many times will do that. So you, you're kind of forced into this state of flow where you have to focus very intently on what you're doing. Otherwise you risk flying it into something or flying it into someone and possibly hurting someone or breaking something. So there's this, just this focus that it sends my brain into that I just, I, I enjoy quite a bit, but also, um, you know, I think back to my childhood and growing up and just being super interested in aviation and flying. My grandpa used to take us up in a Cessna. He was a pilot in world war, world war two, and he would take us flying every now and then in his, uh, Cessna, um, and, uh, I had a buddy in college who would take me up and, you know, when he would do his flights every now and then, and I've always loved flying. I've always loved aviation. I've always been, um, just super interested in it. And so, you know, if I can't fly an actual plane, if I can't fly an actual helicopter, at least not right now, who knows about the future, but if I can't do those things, then might as well fall back on something like this, where you're essentially in the driver's seat of this craft that's flying around, but you're seated but you can still kind of watch and see where you're going. So I think it sort of fulfills both of those things for me. Um, so I've really just sort of gravitated towards it. But uh, that leads me to, um, you know, my, my latest purchase, which is I bought an actual Cinewoop drone. So uh, again, Cinewoop... Uh, for those who don't know, is it's basically like a, a slower, more easy to control version of FPV. You've got like the freestyle FPV, which is just, you know, again, if you watch guys like Mr. Steel or Johnny FPV, they're flying freestyle FPV. Those things go super fast and they can do all sorts of crazy stunts and rolls and things like that. At this point in my FPV journal which, journey, which again is only 11 days in or so, um, I'm only really interested in um, a drone that can give me those kind of cinematic looking drone shots that I was talking about a little bit ago. I can't do that with, um, with, an, with, with the Mavic 2 Pro. So that's what I want to do. I want to, I want to get into this. Uh, so doing a little bit of research, uh, ended up finding the, let's see, it's saying video has no sound. That's interesting. Hold on. Huh. Uh, I got someone in the uh, Facebook chat. Uh, I don't know. I just turned on the sound and it worked for me. So I don't know what's going on there. I don't know, man. I'm not sure. But anyway, yeah, City Whoop. Um, so this thing has some bumpers on the outside. It's going to be a little bit more durable in the event that I will crash, which I, I'm sure that I will. Um, but uh, this is the Diatone MXC349 Taycan 3-inch um, drone. And this, the unfortunate thing about FPV drone is that it does take somewhat of a sizable investment 
Oh, it came back on. Oh, good. Uh, it does take somewhat of a, an investment in the beginning. Um, this is not a ready to fly unit. You do have to buy separate propellers. You have to buy batteries. You have to buy goggles and a radio, which can be used um, for. Did I? Order? Oh, no, I didn't drop it. You have to buy a radio and goggles in order to to be able to fly it. Luckily, the goggles and the radio can be used. You know, if you end up getting other units and things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, so I had to get that. I, I ended up going with the digital system. So when you fly a drone, those those two drone clips that I showed you of me flying the, the little uh, beta FPV drone, that was an analog signal. Um, and a lot of people from my understanding, a lot of people prefer analog because of the low latency. I guess one of the, the cons of analog is that um, you don't have a huge range. And if you kind of go out of range and your signal is going to get all, you know, snowy and you could lose it and you could, you know, let me get out of here. And you could, uh, you could lose the drone. You could lose your signal. Drone could just fly away. Um, but if you're someone who likes doing the freestyle stuff and you need something that's super quick and zero latency, a lot of people will say that's the way to go. Or at least Mr. Steel, um, one of the guys that I watch, will say that's the way to go. Uh, but I ended up going with the digital system. And this was the reason I decided this was based on a video again, from the aforementioned Mr. Steele, who did a, a, a video breakdown recently comparing the DJI digital system to the analog system. And the digital, the DJI, DJI digital signal is exactly what that sounds like. It, instead of seeing kind of a, you know, a old school television analog signal, you're going to have a clean 720p digital signal. And the benefits to that are um, you have uh, a clean signal and you can see more of what you're doing. So it might give you the confidence to maybe go explore areas with your drone that you may not be able to with analog. Also, you have a little bit longer range, um, as far as I understand, so you can go a little bit farther. Um, the, one of the bad things is, oh, let's see. I'm looking at, video has no sound. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know what the, sorry, a little sidebar, someone was commenting on Facebook about the sound, but uh, as far as I could see, everything is up and running, so let's hope it stays that way. But, uh, yeah, so digital, digital is going to give you longer range, it's going to give you a cleaner signal, but it's going to be uh, a little bit more expensive, which it is. The FPV system you know, DJI has their own goggles, their own radio that you can get. Uh, but the digital system is going to be a little bit pricier. And I knew that going into it um, and I can afford it. So because for me, being able to have that range and being able to have, um, you know, a cleaner signal, which I, I would think for someone who is a little bit newer to this whole scene, which I am, being able to see more of what you're doing is probably going to help me. Now, could I have done a little bit more research on the type of drone I wanted to get and the components that I got for it? Absolutely. Could I um, maybe have stepped up incrementally in the drone that I wanted to get? Maybe, you know, upgraded a little bit from this uh, and, you know, taken steps? Sure. Um, could I have bought do what a lot of FPV flyers will, will recommend and buy a kit and build the drone myself so that I understand how all the different flight controllers and motors and everything go together and work together. Definitely. Did I do that? No. Uh, you know, the, buying the drone is a bit of an impulse buy, not going to lie, but, uh, you know, I think for me at least, and maybe I'll learn this the hard way and maybe there's some, uh, FPV people out there that are going to tell me I'm crazy, but I feel like if I fly the drone, if I break the drone, if something doesn't go right, um, I'm pretty good at figuring out answers to issues like that and solving them as I go. So my thing is I would rather learn how to fly and be a good pilot and then learn to fix things as I go. Whether or not that's the right route, I don't know. But, yeah, so that's why I bought a Cine Whoop and... 
Also, just to kind of give you an idea of the different components that I had to buy for it. Um, so let's see, can I zoom in here? Let's go back in here. So this is all of these things here. These are all the different things that I had to purchase in order to, so that when everything came in, I would be up and running and ready to go. Obviously there's the drone unit, which already had the DJI digital um, system built into it. And then uh, I had to get some batteries, obviously, for the drone. Now, the batteries for FPV drones typically last like five, anywhere from four to seven minutes from what I've seen. So I ended up getting a few of those just to make sure I had some, I could do some good flying. That's it. That is one of the benefits of like the Mavic 2 Pro is that you can go fly for usually a minimum of 20 minutes on one battery. Don't quite get that here, but give and take. Uh, obviously got the DJI goggles, got the DJI remote controller. Some people might give me some crap for getting the DJI radio. Um, I like the simplicity of it. I've actually, I've got this one here and then I've got, no, it's not in there. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. I also purchased this a while back. I'm not even sure if this is uh, if this would work i mean i guess it would but this is a fat shark radio um and i i was using this to practice with velocidrone the simulator but the simulator uh yeah i don't know if this is like i don't know i don't know if i could connect this to a thing but also it's this one is very low frills i wanted something that had a little bit more you know some more options to it this only has two buttons on the top i don't really know what i'm talking about to be honest but um so yeah, the, the, the DJI remote control, here, let's do this. I'm gonna pull it up here. The DJI radio. Why you know. Oh, there's the one, the uh, beta FPV one that I have. Um, oh, it's not even there. That's interesting, DJI FPV. Here, we'll just click on this because this has both of them. So this, I did not buy this drone, but uh, those are the goggles that it comes with. This is the uh, remote that it comes with. And um, yeah, this, this drone is set up to work with this digital system. So this will deliver me a digital, uh, some digital feedback. Um, let's see what else. I uh, had to get some straps just to kind of keep things like the battery uh, on, uh, on connected to the drone. Uh, I had to get some propellers. Propellers are super cheap, which is nice. Uh, you can get a four pack for, in this case, $2.69. Um, had to get a battery for the goggles. Had to get a charger for the batteries. And then um, a GoPro mount for the, um, the drone so that I can, on here, mount this camera. So this will be my drone camera uh and i'm i'm curious how long this will last as my drone camera or if i will end up just crashing it and breaking my gopro within a few days i hope not but those are all the things that i had to purchase up front luckily like i said if i ended up getting a different drone i can still use these the dji goggles and radio assuming that the drone that i get is compatible with that digital system um so yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm all in now. And uh, I'm hoping, you know, the, the end goal is really just to get really good at flying it and see if, you know, maybe I can add that as a value add for some of the services that I provide on the creative side with all the client work that I do. Um, you know, whether it's uh, it just, I, you know, I do video stuff, photography stuff, drone you know drone stuff now so um that's not the only reason it's also fun like why not enjoy it if i'm gonna do it and if i'm gonna potentially try to monetize it and make a little money off of it but man yeah it's been fun um and that's kind of like my that's my fpv drone update so like i said uh i don't know exactly what i'm doing yet um i've learned how to fly I've purchased a drone that seems to be a good quality option. 
based on the limited research that I did. I'm hoping that all the components that I got for it are uh, compatible. I did do, if you go to the Get FPV website, um, I did do a live chat with someone and just said, hey, here's what I have in my cart. Is this everything that I need to get up and running? They suggested a couple things, so, uh, and it was an actual person and not just a robot. So if you, uh, if you uh, are in, ever in need of some uh, answers, there's some questions to be answered, go to getfpv.com and uh, choose the chat link and, and chat with some people because they were helpful. So that's it. That's my update. Looking forward to see where it goes from here. I'm um, hoping that within, I'm hoping everything will be here by next week so I can at least kind of show it off. Uh, but it's like a three to 10 day delivery. So I don't know if that's going to happen or not. But hey, if it does, you'll see it here. If not, we'll, uh, we'll do it another day. But if you're still here with me, I would appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button wherever you happen to be watching or listening. And as always, follow me on social media at Ryan Hafey on Instagram and Twitter. Let's have a conversation with, when this is all said and done. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and call this one done. So uh, keep on creating, making, and doing. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.